Long weekend confessional. Burning the sins off his soul. We're having breakfast here on the barbecue. This is uh, the sailor's breakfast. Whatever's in the bilge, we got some, some we got some brie, we got some of these things. These are great. Keep these around for the big one. This big one hits. We got some uh, homemade chorizo, and some bacon. Problem is, I stole my wife's uh, planchette here, and it's got uh, that plastique on there. You know the stuff, Teflon. And because it's Teflon, you can't use a steel spatula, but for getting in there good and proper. So I am going to, uh, oh, that brie is looking good. I'm going to go ahead and get a three, maybe three quarter, maybe half inch. Depends how strong I'm feeling. Cut it out to the size of the barbecue, and then I'll have a proper grill for out here. Look at that. That's a heart attack waiting to happen. Starting off here, we got a one inch plate, quite thick, bit of gravity in her, huh? How to lift it to get it so we can work on it. Here's the trick. You never lift anything if you can possibly avoid it. Lifting is a last resort item. Now, of course, there's something to be said for having extra bodies around to help you lift stuff, but it's also a pain right in the cutting linguals on account of somebody shows up with the Chinese work boots on, the tongs, uh, you know, jamming fingers and pushing when you should be pulling and all that sort of stuff. So I actually prefer to move stuff all by my loads and unless I'm working with a partner I can actually trust. But it, you'll see an iron worker, like if you ever worked around uh, heavy fabrication or ironworks, somebody goes to grab a plate or lift something up, the other guy will wait until he's well positioned before he starts lifting. There'll be a non-verbal communication there, but there is a communication. So if you're not, you know, there's always some rammy fucking asshole that wants to get in there right quick, fast, and hurry to, to prove how tough he is. Those are the guys that get hurt. Now, you always got to be stinking of the next thing that's going to kill you. So when we pull this, what's to stop it from coming right over and crushing my toes? Nothing. I keep my toes out of the way. You got to think of these things. This, you, you start getting into heavy iron, you will see the stupidest fucking maneuvers and near misses after near misses. You cannot be in a hurry when you're moving stuff alone. In order to avoid the ever-present danger of Bozo uh, knocking at the door, we're going to turn down the lights and pretend we're not home. <laughs> This is the case where you got to do layout properly and you know, wow, I measured twice and cut once and it's still too short to avoid that. So we're going to give her a little extra here. We want to go 17 and a half, so we'll give her 18 inches, the full 18 inches mind, not the stimulated 18 inches, and 24. Oh, this. I made this a long time ago in a previous video. It's a aluminum straight edge aluminium for you continental types. And it has big old magnets in the bottom with some emery cloth in order to increase the chute factor. Now she's laid up, we'll flash out the plasma cutter. Only I didn't spend the money to get, uh, well, who is ever going to sever one inch plate in their shop? So didn't spend the money to get the more skookum version, only sever five eighths. So that's my plasma cutter. I could probably cut this, but it'll look, at, uh, it'll look like an apprentice or a dull apprentice went at it with a beaver. So we're going to use the metal cutting circ saw. Rust in pieces, headphone users. That was about eight minutes in the cut. That is one hot saw. You can see the internal strain, stress rather, no, oh, strain in the material because it's opened up on the back side here. It wants to pull away from itself. Now this thing hotter than a two dollar pistol and if you'll recall it took out the thermal overload. Safety reasons. That's chip tray. Full to the brim with vim. I've seen it before where it smoked off the paint and you look in here and it's all clinker. Uh, actual like red hot metal that's burning together, oxidizing. You look at the size of the chips there and the blue, 
you know that those carbide teeth on the saw blade are working real hard not long for this life that's uh it's one of those things it's the gillette razor routine they sell you the saw but what they're really what they're really selling you is the blades because you go through them so bloody fast mind you it's not designed for what i'm using it for is this is an extreme case of abuse and neglect my tools seem to thrive on that sort of thing also i took out the the, the thermal overload because if the cuts taken like that one was taken three quarters of a beer you don't want you don't want your beer to go all english style on you well, it was cool in the shop we can see look at that plate there it's still quite warm we put a lot of energy into that and that saw hotter than a 10 pecker billy goat now here's the thing about the thermal overload yes it's protection but it's also hard on the machine because instead of you know sort of smelling or, or using your spider sense when something is getting hot and just running the fan just just running the tool so the fan cools it off with it no load on it now what happens is the tool totally shuts down so all that latent heat what's stuck in all that iron it spikes instead of allowing it you get a higher temperature spike when the thermal overload cuts off because now you're not exhausting any air through there any cooling air whereas if you're sort of smart about it and you're on it you can actually make your tool last longer without the thermal overload but you got to be smart about it pardon my pulse width modulated carrier frequency we are flashing up the scratchy in order to run the mass act or heck Bit of dicking around here, got to swap around for end on the subject of dicking around. You think you buy a stout machine now, girthy, more girthy is more better until you get to a certain level and then it's useless. But you see here we got what you call 12 inches to your wife of Y travel, which fuck all in a big ship really. So there is some uh, allowances must be weighed for, you know, swapping things this way and that way. Oh, it's you. So. I set to stinking last night here after I shut her down. It was bubbly hour. So uh, after half a bottle of wine there with the wife, I figured out that, well, first off, I had to crank her down a bit, little bit. You see the blueness of these chips. This is a high speed HSS, high speed steel bit. Doesn't like the heat so much. Carbide wouldn't be such a big deal. So we cranked her down till we got straw colored. Here's the thing with these the Chinese, 100% Chinesium. HSST area uh, HSST you know what I'm trying to say is that they're cheap like borscht but you got to treat them like Fabergé eggs so it, it doesn't quite make a sense they're real delicate on account of being craptacular so we need some coolant in there also coming to the realization that uh, a semi-automatic machine with what's not working is not all that much fun to hand crank that's a lot of fucking work. Got a hell of a work out there with the stranger, so uh, got to be careful. Might pop the head of it clean off next time. Yeah, I hear you. I know. I know. Spoiling the old girl. We're running the IV drip. Had a fancy uptown rig there. Towards the end, ran out, so it's just using this patented not booze stuff. Seem to work okay. Got a pleasant aroma as well. Here's the rig here. Look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ball valve. Ah. Uh ah. -huh. Uh -huh. Wait for it. Holy old fuck. Chip making is thirsty work. Even consecrated with the blood of the stranger. Look at that. A real tear. It gets <laughs> not used to that twist at the top on those knobs. Got a bit of the shakes there. We're done with the blood gullet or the grease gullet rather <laughs> thinking nice and we've done the uh, periphery we're gonna break all the edges then we got to do something about this mill scale you don't want that getting off in your hash and breaking somebody's tooth so I think we'll use some chemical action to get rid of that oh, I got a big old vat one for containing the steel got some wicked bad stuff dihydrogen monoxide known by the state of cancer to cause California and some muriatic acid uh, hydrogen chloride uh, do as you oughta. 
I said the water. Ah, fuck it. Let's put her all in there. Maybe even clean her out a little bit. Oh, she's getting hot. Okay, now you need some ventilation. And then we'll jam yonder stick in yonder bucket. Wait a goodly amount of time, maybe beer, beer and a half. Come back, wipe it down with the Scotch Brite. It should peel that uh, mill scale right off. I've affixed some of them blue rags, not the crappy ones you get from the Costco in the roll, but some proper woven blue rags onto the surface. And then every now and again, I come by and wet it. Seems to be working okay. Not as good as full submersion, mine, but. I left her for a day, and this is the results, as you see. I uh, was studying for this day up late Olympics here, babysitting this Fergan thing. Concentration of hydrochloride, no, yeah, hydrochloric acid just wasn't high enough, so it took too long. You can see we're getting some iron chloride in here, wounds, some rust, but the mill scale is off. You can hear the anguished cries <laughs> through the internet, but it'll rust. Of course it'll rust. We got to get some oil on it and we are going to cook that off in the barbecue. That will season it the same way you season an old cast iron frying pan. Now that is a beautiful even heat. One thing I noticed here in the cold hard light of day, you buy a milling machine and it's a hell of a deal. Uh, you might get what you pay for. <laughs> per usual, any milling machine I touch just clapped right back. Oh, tis a poor craftsman what blames his tools. A little bit thick. The results are there. I'm just really disappointed in myself for taking for granted that this thing was clapped right out. I mean, if it's too good to be true, it's too fucking good to be true. These are your huevos. These are your huevos. On drugs. You really want bacon and hash browns to go with them. <laughs> Dirty old miner I worked with. Metal on metal contact got drugged into the office. We're gonna test you for drugs. Test test, see? He says to the nurse, right fucking on. What drugs are we testing? Oh, fuck yeah, boys. This is fantastic. Heirloom piece, looks like it's about 80 years old. Used by Grandpa Jed out in the mountains of Tennessee. You cannot buy something this skookum. One inch steel plate. It diffuses, there's nothing better for to eat. You can't get around, you want mass. You want thermal mass there in order to get a nice even heat. Even got some ugly marks there from, uh, well, none other than hubris. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Gently. Ooh. What do you think of that? Cool. Okay, the plus. Yeah. Mais en beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup.